So welcome to the first tutorial on SOLIDWORKS add-in or in general the SOLIDWORKS API programming. Uh, we're going to get straight into it. Uh, we're going to create a SOLIDWORKS add-in in C Sharp from scratch. So the very first thing you need to do is go to C Drive, Program Files, uh, your SOLIDWORKS folder and then the SOLIDWORKS folder inside that. You then need to browse that folder and you'll see these SOLIDWORKS interop DLL files. Go ahead and copy all those, select them all copy. And if you're following the Git repository uh, that I've published on GitHub, you'll see the structure uh, with them already in. If not, just create a folder called References anywhere you like. Call this 2016 because that's the version of SOLIDWORKS I'm on at the moment. And then I just pasted the DLLs into this folder. So just copy these files anywhere you like uh, for your reference. In this structure it's in the references folder. Then we're going to go ahead and open Visual Studio. So I'm using 2015. Uh, 2017's just in release candidate at the moment you might want to try that but uh, if you want to play it safe just install Visual Studio 2015. Create a new project and then you want a class library. So there's quite a lot of class libraries. So if you search in the top here and go class, you'll see all these sort of class libraries. You don't want .NET Core, you don't want Portable, you want the plain class library. And then out of those, you want the one that says Visual C Sharp on the right. Then we're gonna go in this uh, structure I've made here for the tutorials. I'm just calling it blank add-in. Uh, I'll call this angel6.solidworks blank add in and click OK. This creates the project and the solution. You now want to um, first things first right click on the project here that's the one with the C sharp icon properties then you want to set up your name that you want it to output um, which you can leave as default uh, same with your namespace uh, whatever you typed in the project name by default will be these two so if you want to change them just change them here click assembly info and click make assembly com visible this is important so that uh, SOLIDWORKS can actually use the DLL because it, it runs on com so it needs to be able to access everything in this file and that's all there is to the uh, project properties now we need to add references. So you see there's references here. Right click, add reference. And then if you browse uh, to the folder where you place the references. I'm going to add a reference to SOLIDWORKS. SOLIDWORKS commands, constants, document manager and published. Now you don't need all these right away. I think in fact you only need the SOLIDWORKS one. Um, constants stores all specific enumerator values and things like that. Commands has got other parts in. Document managers for working on files when they're not open. Published, I can't quite remember. But in general, these are the ones I add. And then you know you've got references to everything you, you typically need. So you click add, and it ticks them here. Click OK, and they appear in this menu here. So now we've got references to the SOLIDWORKS um, API. The default class it's made, um, let's just go ahead and rename that class. Uh, we'll call it Taspane um, Integration. And then you can see the default namespace that we called the project as here. It's created a public class for us, and it's the name is the one we've just renamed the file to. We need to give it an interface, so it's a colon, and then I SOLIDWORKS add in. If you press control and period, control and dot, it will automatically search for where it is. And there you go, that's actually where the SOLIDWORKS published is used to get this add in. So you click this using, and all it does is adds this using statement up here. So now we have um, an add in. Now you'll see that we've got to implement two functions, which is connect to SOLIDWORKS and disconnect from SOLIDWORKS. So we'll get to those anyway. Just clear off all these unused namespaces. So this is the main add-in. This is where 
when you register the add-in it adds the registry entries to regedit and it also responds to SOLIDWORKS telling it to connect and disconnect and it creates the task pane window so that's essentially what this add-in part does um, we're going to comment this um, so three slashes at the top can give it a comment um, and we'll just call it our SOLIDWORKS task pane and that'll do to be honest for task pane add-in then we're going to make a region which is just a way to tidy up code into sections called private members if you're unfamiliar with C-sharp uh, just check out the YouTube channel I've got that you're on right now uh, and you'll see some C-sharp tutorials that goes over everything in here and classes, regions, comments and a whole array of other things so if you're not comfortable with the C-sharp I don't explain it here because I've got separate videos explaining how to do C-sharp in general uh, then we're going to create uh, some variables we'll need so we'll need a private integer for the SOLIDWORKS cookie uh, we'll need a uh, task pane view I think it's called and again if you press control and dot it will find the namespace that it's contained within which is just the SOLIDWORKS one and that adds it up here and we'll call this the task pane view uh, we'll also comment these And then we will need, obviously, our own interface, our own UI. So the thing that we add to the um, the task pane on the right. So let's just go over here quickly. Right-click on the project, add new item, or in fact, you can just click user control here. It's a shortcut. And let's call it um, task pane host UI. that just creates a new blank um, UI, new user control if you right click on the, use, the host user control file and click view code you can see it's just a class that's a user control and does nothing, the initialized components is the default constructor for the um, behind code behind file that you can see here they just creates the user control so all basic um, stuff so that's the user control we're going to inject so this actual control that you'll see when you double click on the file this is the control we'll see when we come to um, load it up so let's just click in toolbar over here and then button and then let's just add a button uh, just as simple as that let's just drag it out a little bit and just place a simple button purely for visual we're not going to do anything with it we're just going to show that we you know we have a button and that'll do us for now so we need a variable of this type of this control because we're going to create an instance of it so we need a variable of task pane host UI and this is the actual task pane itself oh well it's the control that's going to go inside of it And then um, we we'll want a instance of SolidWorks itself, which is SLDWorks. Uh, we'll just call it um, SolidWorks application. And I think finally we will need uh, when we register our add-in so the thing that's going to appear on the right hand side the task pane it needs a unique ID it needs some way to differentiate between your add-in and every other add-in so we need a, a unique ID for that so we're going to do a private constant string and we're going to call it um, SolidWorks task pane 
uh, prog ID. And we're going to call this one angel 6solidworks dot um, blank add in. And that'll do for now. I mean, we can go a bit more specific and do dot task pane host. Or dot task pane. It makes no difference, really. It's just a unique name that you can make up. We now need to set this ID to the user control. So if you right click on the host UI and view code, then in the top of this class here, I want to open a square bracket. I'm going to type uh, prog ID, again, control and period to give you the suggestion of where that is stored, which is in runtime interrupt services. Open your normal parentheses. And then we want to now, you can see it's asking for a unique ID. We want to reference this. So actually we're gonna to have to make that public so that we can access it. So let's just move that outside of private members. And create a new one here. So to access that, we just need to do taskpane integration dot sw taskpane prog ID. Uh, what did we say it was? Taskpane integration. And then this is just setting the prog ID to that string. And then this user control gets the prog ID. And then when you, you'll see when we come to construct the add in in a moment that we effectively inject this user control by simply passing in this ID. You can't just create an instance of this in C Sharp and then pass it into SolidWorks because SolidWorks is working over COM, it's not working directly with us. So we have to do everything through COM. And the way that that will work is we'll pass this ID off to COM and then SolidWorks will go ahead and try and find this class in our DLL because we made our assembly COM visible. So it can then search this DLL and find this class because we've tagged it here and then SOLIDWORKS will then create this for us. So the reason we need this ID is so that SOLIDWORKS can find this class through COM. So that's all the variables we need. Uh, next we need to implement the iSOLIDWORKS interface. So a quick way of doing that, again click over anywhere inside here, control and dot and then implement interface and it's gone ahead and snuck it inside of this. So let's just move it outside. So these are the functions that we need to be a SOLIDWORKS add-in at minimum. We need to respond when we're told to connect and we need to do something when we disconnect. Let's just wrap this up in a nice region. Let's comment this one. And then this is the current SOLIDWORKS instance and the current SOLIDWORKS cookie. And then for the disconnect, uh, copy and paste the comment. So these two functions get called by SOLIDWORKS. So we don't call these, SOLIDWORKS calls these when it opens and connects and then this is when it's closing. Or when you add in as unloading either way. So we now need to do something inside of these. So when we connect to SOLIDWORKS, the first thing we wanna do is uh, store a reference. the SOLIDWORKS instance so that we can actually do things with SOLIDWORKS. So um, 
did we not make a reference to that? Oh, yeah, we did. Um, SolidWorks application. So the SolidWorks application is, and it's a SolidWorks as the type of object, and this SolidWorks. So all we're doing there is casting this object to what we know is a SolidWorks instance and storing it. So now this is where we access SolidWorks from. This is sort of the entry point into doing anything with SolidWorks. And store the cookie ID as well. And yeah, it's an integer. There we go. Uh, now one other thing we need to do is we need to set callbacks. These will come into play um, later on. But this is just a standard thing you want to do uh, is to set up a callback to our application so we want uh, the SOLIDWORKS application I think it's set add in callback info um, modular handle add-ins cookies okay let's use the second one should work fine Module handle for now is nothing. Uh, the adding callbacks is going to be ourselves. We don't have any callbacks yet, but we're just getting it ready to set up so that in future we can, you know, handle callbacks if we like. And we know the cookie is this. So right now, this won't really do anything for us in this add-in. But again, in future, we can then change this, and we've got the the location where we want to then do certain callbacks. You know, get certain events. But again, that'll come into play later on. You could also check if it succeeded here, which we're not going to for now. And then we want to inject our UI. So this is where we want to create the task pane and add our UI. So we'll make a new function for that called uh, load UI. Again, hover over the function, control dot and enter. And that's like a quick way of just typing the function for us. We'll fill in this function in a minute. And we'll move it into another region. And that's all there really is to this connected to the SOLIDWORKS. We store the details, we register a callback, we load our UI. So we want to return true that everything went okay. So that's the connect done. Disconnect in a similar fashion, there's very little to do here. We just want to um, unload our UI, in essence. So there's the blank function that we'll fill out in a minute. And same here, return true that everything went okay. Just a comment there. So that's the connect and disconnect on. So right now we're effectively a valid add-in. We don't do anything, we'll crash with these throws in here, but we're a valid add-in once we've done these two functions. So it will load and SOLIDWORKS won't complain. So now we just want to inject this UI, this user control we've made, task pane host UI, into the actual task pane view for this add-in. Um, so to do that, uh, we want to um, well, there's a single call. I think it is. Well, it will be in SolidWorks application. Uh, it is the create task pane. Yeah, create task pane view. So this call is what registers a task pane. It creates the task pane on the right hand side. You can see it's after an image and then a tooltip. Uh, and that's all it's asking for. So for an image, Let's go ahead and add an image to this project. So right click on the project over here, add, and then you can go ahead and create an image, a PNG, a JPEG, a bitmap, I think it accepts all three. Uh, make sure it's no wider or no larger than 40 by 40 pixels because that's about the maximum size you can have. And then in your project, right click, add existing item and browse for that image. So I've gone ahead and created one uh, which you can use if you're following this Git repository. Uh, I've placed it into resources, images, 
and then you'll change this drop down to all and you can see I've called it logo small so it's just my little angel 6 logo uh, that's a really bad view of it it's better if you just hover over uh, so you can see there the the logo and that is I believe I've made it about 30 something about 37 by 32 pixels so now we need to pass the path into that uh, on this machine so firstly we want to copy this image to the same location as the DLL the actual add-in when it's compiled so with the icon selected here, make sure your copy to output folder or copy to output directory is copy of newer or copy always, whichever. And that will just make sure that this image is going to be in the same location as this uh, add ins DLL file. So that when we want to reference it, we can find out where the DLL is and then simply pass in this name and it will give us the uh, the full system path, if you will, the path on the computer to where that image is, and then we simply pass that path in here. So all this is asking for is a path on the the physical computer to an image. So like C drive, users, Luke, pictures, and something you could pass in a you, know, you could hard type a path into here, um, such as uh, you know like as we were saying, C drive, users, Luke, pictures, some image.jpg and that would work perfectly fine if there's an image there so all we're doing is finding out where we're now going to get this logo small from and it, like I say it's going to copy to effectively this folder uh, but to the output folder when we compile so if we have a look at the add-in here's the code we're working on right now when we compile when we build it goes into the bin folder and then debug and this folder will have uh, if we just comment that out so we can build. That will have the DLL and look it's copied the image as well. So when we register this DLL, we're just going to leave it in this folder for now. Then we know if we find out where we are, where this actual DLL itself is, we can then just give it a name logo small. So let's find that folder um, called image path and that's going to be path and then that's in control dot and you'll see using system in out uh, we're going to have to combine two paths the first part is going to be the directory name of um, this assembly's code base so all you need to do to find where this assembly is where this DLL is is just pass in type of and then just the name of say this class it's anything that's inside this whole project so we'll use this task pane integration uh, dot assembly dot code base so this little part here effectively finds out where this task pane integration is which is in this project which compiles to this DLL and then it's finding the code base so it's actually going to find this exact um, file itself uh, it's also going to uh, then get the directory name so it's gonna uh, gonna remove this and you're gonna end up with a path to here you're gonna end up with uh, this path here is what that's gonna get but you're also gonna have um, a file colon backslash to the text so we'll simply remove that uh, so we'll remove file colon backslash with nothing so it's just a normal so you do get this exact path otherwise you'd end up with a file colon backslash like that that's just how it references the code base so this essentially this part here just gets us the location of this this project so that's the first part and the last part is to simply include the name of the image which is here if this were inside another folder, if we created a folder in here, add folder, then you'd obviously have to include the folder name as well here. So that will get us the path to the image. So we're now going to have an icon in the task pane as well. We call the create task pane, pass in the image path, and then a tooltip when you hover over the task pane. So we'll just say, uh, ooh, my first SolidWorks add-in. So that will create the task pane, uh, but it won't create uh, the our UI. So it will create a task pane, but there will be nothing in it at all. There won't be any UI. 
So we now want to inject this UI into the newly created task pane. So let's first comment this. So to add our UI, this is where I mentioned it's now going to look at this prog ID to find this user control and then SOLIDWORKS will create it for us and inject it. So we need to pass in this prog ID. So to do that we do uh, mtaskpane host um, which is the variable that we're going to save for this UI in. So you can see that's the, of this type, we haven't created it yet. But it is going to be um, and we'll have to cast it to this type. Uh, the task pane view, which we've just created here. Oh, that's a good point. We need to actually save that task pane view into the variable uh, task pane view. So now we create the task pane view, and then using that task pane view, we want to add a control. And then you can see it's asking for the class name, which is the prog ID. The prog ID is the the class name if you will and there's no license for this so I'll just do string.empty in fact I should have done that there and that's all there is to it so this will now tell SOLIDWORKS to go ahead and find the class that's inside this DLL with that ID and then inject it into the UI and that literally is all there is to starting up the add-in and now having this UI load so that's the job done of loading the UI. Now we want to clean up the task pane when we disconnect. So inside here, uh, now because the task pane host is a C sharp object, so it's not got an issue with com. Uh, at least this reference isn't anyway. The SOLIDWORKS will create a com instance and that'll clean it up for us. But this instance in our code is not a com object, it's it's actually a a reference to our class here. So there's no issue with disposing of that um, information. So all we need to do for that, and you don't even really need to do this, this is just over precautious, just simply set it to nothing. Then the task pane view, however, um, is, if you click on task pane view and hover over, you can see it's, it's part of the SOLIDWORKS um, API, which is COM. So we need to be careful, we do need to clean this up properly. So to do that, firstly, we want to do task pane view, I want to delete the view, which is going to clean up the com reference to this, the instance it created of our UI. So that's going to clean up the view in the task pane. Uh, and then we want to actually release the memory. So to do that, you need, uh, oh, Marcel. Marshall, there we go. Control dot, and that's in runtime interrupts. Marshall dot uh, release com object. And we're going to pass in the task pane view. And that's going to do the. Uh, Release com reference and clean up memory. And then finally, again, just to be sure there's no references, uh, we just clean up this, our own reference, and make sure it's null. Um, so that's it, that's now cleaned up. So that's the whole. Um, add-in done there. Now, in order to get that add-in to load into SOLIDWORKS, we need to register it via COM. So we need the registry, Windows RegEdit, to actually recognize this class and actually make it a COM object. So the way that COM works is it reads the registry for um, class IDs and, and finds out you know the ID of a certain class and then loads it in. Uh, so to do that, we need to uh, create some com register functions and unregister functions and then we can go ahead and register it. So we'll call this a region for com registration. 
uh, we'll make a, it doesn't need to be a public function it just needs to be static call it com register pass in a type and then we need to flag this uh, with an attribute of com register function so that when you call regasm it knows where to find this function and what to do so when you call regasm and then pass in this dll it will find this function and, and call this function so it will register the DLL as com, and then this is the additional step. And in this additional step, we want to add this add-in to the SolidWorks registry, so that we found in SolidWorks in the add-in menu. So by default, if you register this as com, that's fine, it will work. But we need to do some custom code, because as well as being accessible in com, we want to appear as an add-in inside of SolidWorks. So we want to find the path to where we want to add this key. Uh, which is um, software SolidWorks add-ins and then um, in fact let me do a string format here instead so that I can format this GUI properly Uh, and put an app there. So this is the path to our add-in. So this com register is going to be our type, and this is the GUI of our add-in. So this is effectively the uh, registry entry in the local machine that we want to create. So it's inside local machine software SolidWorks add-ins, and then this will be our uh, GUI for this application and now we want to add that to the registry so just do uh, using uh, registry key equals win32 uh, registry local machine and then we want to create this key that we've just made so that will go ahead and create this folder if you will in the registry and now inside of that we want to set our um, add-in values so the first one the default value uh, so if you pass null this is a boolean if you will like a zero or a one of whether to load on startup so if we pass one here load add-in when SOLIDWORKS opens so if we set that to zero, it won't. So we want it to op open our uh, task pane as soon as we open SolidWorks. Then you can set the title and description. So set value, uh, title. So add in, and description. And there's the description and the title, which appear in the SolidWorks add-ins menu. When you look at the uh, add-ins, these are the two things that will appear in that list. Uh, now we just need to unregister. Let's just comment this first. Again, a private static void is fine, and it's a com on register. Again, we'll get the type passed in. Not a common register function, and it's a com uh, register call to remove our. So now we just need to reverse this. This is like the install and the uninstall, if you will, of the add-in. So whatever we did here, we just need to make sure we reverse. Um, so we just need to remove that path. So 
we just want to get the same path. And then we just want to Microsoft Survey dot delete subkey tree. So we delete everything that's inside of it. And that's it. And that's it, that's the whole add-in. So if we press Control, Shift and B for build, you can see it built successful. And that, in a nutshell, is the whole add-in. So we can expand on this, but this this setup, uh, this whole sort of setup here, uh, which stays the same for the most part throughout. Once you've done this once, that's it, you've got your add-in. Then you can focus on your actual code. You know, you can make this UI, then you can do things with the UI. You've got a reference to SolidWorks that you can do what you like with. So this is sort of the hard work. And this is, it's not that hard. It's now done and out the way. Don't worry too much if you don't fully understand this. It's You can really just follow along if you like, get it running, and then just go ahead and tweak uh, the UI, change the, uh, you know, the names of your add-ins and things like that. That's perfectly fine. That'll, that'll work. Uh, but like I said, it's not overly complicated. When we run Regasm, this gets called when we run it to uninstall this gets called uh, we just add our instance here to the SOLIDWORKS registry which is what SOLIDWORKS looks for when it loads it searches these uh, this add-ins part of the registry it finds the ID if it's told to load on startup it will and then using this ID it'll then look at the commentaries in the registry uh, and effectively find our commentaries so it can find this DLL and then it will load the DLL. It will then call connect to SOLIDWORKS from the DLL after creating an instance of ourselves, which will then run this code, which will then fire the load UI, which will then create the task pane, and then we defer back to SOLIDWORKS to create an instance of, of this UI. So the whole thing works in a nice little loop. Uh, again, you don't really need to understand it fully uh, because you can just use this code and get it working and then go from there. So control shift B builds, that's going to build to your, so this is your solution that you created. If you don't know where it is, just right click on this project here and open folder in file explorer. Then it goes into the bin and because we're in debug mode here, uh, you go into the debug folder and there's the DLL, this is now the add-in and this is the image we're going to use. Now to register that, so to actually get um, Windows to call this com register function. You can do it yourself manually and you can just open command prompt. You'd have to run as admin and then you could go to uh, Windows Microsoft.net Framework 64 because we're on a 64 bit version. The version 4.0 Regasm is the thing that's going to run the register that's then going to call these functions for us forward slash code base which means it's a fixed location there's only a single DLL for our add-in uh, and then the path to this add-in which would be here so you can right click with shift pressed copy as path paste it in and you can just press enter and run this exact code and that will register our DLL now this has caused a lot of issues in the past uh, so many people have issues with making sure for one they're running this as admin if I run this now it won't work um, so an error occurred when writing registry information, admin privileges or permissions are needed. So you've got issues for one, you have to then right click on um, command prompt, right click again, run as admin, confirm, um, you know there's a lot of things you have to do and then people sometimes go into the wrong folder, they go into framework or they go into the wrong version. Just in general it's a headache. So you can register it yourself that way. Instead what I've done, if again if you copy the github folder or if you just look in the link of this video, I'll put a link. There's a tool I've made called Add-in Installer. And you can just run this tool, Add-in Installer. And you can see it spins up. It automatically finds SOLIDWORKS. It automatically finds the correct regasm. And all you need to do is click Browse here and go to your DLL. So if we go to 
SolidWorks API, tutorials, the add-in we've just created. And we go to this add-in, which we said, which is, um, go backwards now, back to where we were. This is this add-in. We just simply click install now. And you see the add-in was installed successfully. You can look at the source code to this tool. It's all free, it's all on GitHub. So you can see what it's done. But effectively, it just finds SolidWorks to make sure you have SolidWorks in general. Uh, it doesn't use it in any way, just make sure you've got it. it. Finds regasm for you. And then it just calls regasm forward slash code base forward slash and then this path. And then it checks what the response is and gives you a nice message if it was installed correctly. Same you can uninstall as well. So just a nice visual, easy way of installing your add-in. Saves any confusion. You basically open this, click browse, select the add-in, click install. And that's all there is to it. So that says add-in now installed. So if we go ahead and open SolidWorks, we should see our add-in as well as our logo and our button. So let's see what happens. And there you go, you can see our add-in here. And you can see our description. First task pane, and you click. Will my first add-in, and there's the button which obviously does nothing yet, but you can see already we've, we've managed to get the add-in fully working. Go to Tools and Add-ins. You can see here my add-in, and you can see the path to the DLL, which is the path to our DLL. And there you go, that's the, um, that's the add-in fully loaded and ready to use. So that's it for this video. Uh, the next video, I think I will refactor this um, code, so that instead of having to write this code, I'm going to make it nice and easy so somebody can just create a new project, reference um, what's going to become a new sort of SDK, if you will, for the SOLIDWORKS API that I'm going to create that makes things easier. And you could just create a new class and just say uh, dot create add in, or even just flag maybe an attribute on here that just says uh, SOLIDWORKS add in something like this and pass a title and a description and that's it you won't need to do any of this law this whole code will go and it'll be nice and simple uh, once we've done that we'll then get into actual SOLIDWORKS code we'll start doing things like you know when you click this button actually do things and that's when we'll get into the actual SOLIDWORKS API um, if you like this video please like it it's very important um, you get some people that don't like a video or just don't like uh, people being successful and they'll click dislike it's a lot less likely that when people like videos, they never bother to like them. So even if people enjoy them, it's the only way I can tell is if people like the video. It'll also help boost views and, and then you'll get more videos as well. So like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it and there'll be more to come. Thanks.